Um, Shauna works in a variety of mediums. I have seen some of her demos in uh, oil and tonight of course is pastel for us. Um, her paintings are saturated with light and color and lots of energy. And uh, she takes a lot of her information from years and years of painting from life. One of the things I thought was so interesting about Shauna's art career was that um, she started out as the resident artist in Yellowstone National Park, um, which I think is so cool, Shauna. Um, she's exhibited in international competitions and she's received major awards also in international exhibits, including Renaissance. Shauna has been a full-time professional painter for more than 45 years. And um, she's gonna do a demo tonight uh, that's gonna last about an hour, maybe a little bit longer. And I told her to go ahead and go long. Please save your questions um, for the end. But if you have something timely that you wanna ask while the demo's going on, I'll stay on it and, uh, and transfer your question from the chat to Shauna. So she'll be able to hear me. All right, Shauna, okay. take it away. I'm going to start this demo um, with a watercolor underpainting and I find that that is, um, it's really helpful for me to start with an underpainting. I don't like to just jump right into a pastel on a, on a light piece of paper because sometimes, as you all know, you can fill up the tooth and pretty soon you can't put anything more on. So if I can get most of my darks and values uh, put in, that helps me a lot. Um, I think, if I were going to say anything about my philosophy of painting, it would be um, I want to see shapes of light and shadow instead of things. I'm going to be looking at negative shape. So I'll look at negative shapes. I'll look at shapes of light, shapes of shadow, and try really hard not to look at the object. So I'm going to now change um, my view so you can see what I'm looking at with my palette. I'm going to start with just trying to see um, the negative shapes and so I'm going to go ahead and work right directly onto the canvas. I used to draw, I used to put a lot of um, pencil marks and I found that sometimes when I did that I would find that I couldn't match the shape to the to the outline. Sometimes uh, I've discovered that the, if you put in an outline, um, it actually doesn't necessarily match the shape when you get done. So I'm going to um, start with a little bit more water so that this is on, by the way, this is UART uh, 200 paper. I, um, I wanted to use a paper that you all could uh, have access to so it's a sanded paper and um, so I'm going to be and this is again it's an underpainting so it doesn't have to be exact but I do want to come down and what I've just done now is is the part of the side of the horse's head and now we're going to come under with some yellow and lighter yeah. and come under and um, I'm trying to see looks like looks like you can see that okay I'm, I'm I can see my own screen so it looks like I'm coming with uh, some yellow through here and um, some dark a little bit darker through here I'll go back to um, so now you can just barely see the side of the the side of him, and again I'll go with some lighter color and come down to the, um, the chest and come down like this. So now I'm going to go to the inside because the inside negative shapes help me the most. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, here's um. Right about down here, I can say that this is going to be where I'm going to be looking at essentially that shape inside and 
-hmm. my shape is actually very narrow right here. And then it comes um, across. That'll be a little bit of an adjustment later. Okay, so now um, I'm going to go ahead and um, do a little bit on the shadow shape of the horse now, just um, so I can see what I'm looking for is a shape of shadow and a shape of light. And this is, again, just an underpainting. I'm not worried too much about um, anything but value and, and shape of light or shadow. I really do believe that um, we, we see what we know, we see what we expect. And the more I paint, the more I find out that if I, if I try really hard to see just um, the shape of things instead of, of the object, if I don't identify the object, it helps me an awful lot. So here we go, all of this part is a little bit darker. I don't care if it smears a little bit. Um, and now we'll do the shape of shadow right here. And come through here. And right here. And now we'll work on a little bit of the, uh, the lighter part, the, the light part of the, of the horse. So now, again, if I just if I don't think horse, I know horse is pretty good. I've, I've painted and drawn and ridden horses all my life, but that doesn't seem to matter. It's like, um, it matters mostly that you can get yourself to understand that, um, you see a shape of light or a shape of dark. I say it over and over, but that's really the basis of all this. That little skinny thing right there, and then it goes just above where the where the nose came in. Goes this way, comes this way, and comes this way. And if that and each shape I do, I'll do independent from anything else. I'll do each shape uh, independent. So if this doesn't match up with what I've done before, I have to correct one of them. I don't know which one, but um, so that way I can keep checking myself. So let's go, this is a little bit smear. I'm going to sweep this a little bit. And again, that's kind of what's nice about pastel because I can fix all of this. And so now let's go with um, the shadow here. And now down this. Now I'm looking at what's, what's the shape here. Yeah. And I'm just go straight down and straight down here. And then we have a, a dark part right here, which is the hoof. Um, so that, that takes care of that, that comes that way, this comes this way, and we have this coming in here. And so I think you can see that what I'm thinking about and what I'm doing is just purely, uh, it's almost like cutting things out of paper. I, I, I just think in terms of, um, What's the shape and what's the shape that I leave in, in between so I can check myself. It really, um, really helps to um, kind of think that way. And let's see, I'm going to do a little bit more around the outside. Um, I'm using one big old brush so that I can work pretty fast. And um, if I have a good brush with a good point, I can, um, it doesn't matter how big it is, as long as, um, as long as it snaps really nice, has a good snap and, um, and has a good point. That way I can um, definitely do as much detail as I need to. But what I'm thinking in terms of when I'm doing this, what I'm thinking of um, is, I'm thinking in terms of what are my biggest shapes that I need to deal with? Um, what are my biggest shapes? I'll try to do those first and um, do my next biggest shapes later. And, and, um, okay, so now um, let's go to the 
part, I guess I'll be leaving part of the jockey um, light. So I'll go to the next thing that I see that might be kind of important would be this little strip of saddle blanket and we'll go this way. And also, you know, the, um, I tend to think in terms of when I have something that's uh, a small shape inside of a bigger shape, I, I pretty much ignore it. I kind of have a 20, 10% or 20% rule. If something is less than 20%, like I have a couple of things, uh, little exceptions in this saddle blanket, that um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to just, I'm just going to say, um, I'm just going to go for the biggest shape that I can, and um, then I can make small adjustments later. And so now let's do a couple of uh, nice shapes right here. There's a dark, kind of a dark triangle right here. And um, I'm working vertically, so, and, and this paper is keeping it pretty damp. I've not used this paper with watercolor before, so it's, uh, it's always a new experience to change uh, what we usually work on but um now let's see I'll do this piece of shadow and so this is the triangle that's before the jockey and the triangle of, of space but below the jockey connects and is not really separate from a shape that goes around his face and over to the to the part of his his shirt. So right now, if I squint my eyes, I cannot see the difference between this and this. And so I will keep them as one for the moment because again, I'm trying to say, is it a shadow shape? And if it's a shadow shape, it's not outlined like a coloring book. It's actually, um, I have to kind of see what the, with the shape of shadow, it will connect to the rest of the shape of shadow. It's, in other words, I'm not looking for edges of things. I'm looking for shapes of dark, however far they go. So here, I'm getting that one. And let's see, that's pretty close to this. So I'm going to come back over here and go over here. So even though I'm working with um, a lot of silhouette and and big shapes. I'm still trying really hard to to get this the, the silhouette as close as I can. It's like I'm not just um, making great big swoops. I'm not making a, a approximate marks. I, if I have a silhouette, I'm trying to get it pretty close, partly for efficiency, so I don't have to do it over. And let's see, that right there is where the horse is going to come. So I have to the other. So if I get the silhouette right, it will actually, um, everything will, will come together rather nicely. And I don't have to um, re restate something that I've done an approximate, um, you know, let's just get something down um, and see if we can kind of feel better about putting something down a little bit right away so that, um, and then and then having to change it all. So this is, now I'm gonna before I do this, I'm gonna do this whole great big shape of dark up here because it's um I do need to have that. And when I do this great big shape of dark, um trying to control the water so it doesn't drip too much, um then I'm gonna see where that helmet is gonna happen and make sure that I have it lined up right. I'm going right through that little stick of uh, fence post because again that's a smaller shape. This part right here will be a little bit of a darker shape. And I don't know, I think it's starting to come together. Um, I can see a horse in there anyway. Um, and now let's see if I can yeah. take that darker shape and um, and come around to the top and make sure that, that this is lined up with that. So let's see if I come from the other side. Um, I'm going to go about here. Let's see, that probably is about where anything above that is safe. So I'm going to go ahead and take it up. So part of what I'm thinking when I do that, when I just did what I just did, 
is I'm thinking that I don't want to make like a fat outline um, of things. I want to give myself a whole shape up here because then I can compare this shape to that shape. And so that's what I'm interested in is comparing a shape to a shape. And so let's see if I can um, I come right here's, here's going to be there. And then so that's going to be where that is. And so I can come. And I'll, I'll tell you another thing that I'm thinking at this point that's going to come only that far and then it's going to come down. So at this point, I'm thinking in terms of um, a lot of things that look like there should be circles or are or, or around like a swoop around a, a, a like this round helmet. In the end, I'm going to be thinking of how I can make that a straight line going this way and a straight line going this way and, and a straight line going this way because every time I have a, a, an angle and a direction, I can measure that. I can I can see how far it needs to be. I'm going to, this is going to come in a little bit. And so this is also going to come in a little bit by, by the nature of, I have to move that in. So this is an adjustment I'm just making because of, um, I just have to because, so when I did this shape and came back around this way, then some of the stuff I had put previously is, is now having to be adjusted. And I certainly don't mind making adjustments. It's like if I see something that is not right, it's going to have to be changed. But that way, if I come from one direction and then another direction in a negative shape, I can decide which one's correct and which one isn't. But um, when you start looking at, I'm sure you've all noticed this, but when you look at paintings by masters, you'll find that there's a lot, an awful lot of, um, instead of being curves and swoops, there's a lot of straight angles on the edges. Um, it just makes it easier to see what direction something, like a roof line, it, um, it's like what, what's the direction, what's the angle, and what's, um, and what's the length of it. And if you could put like a straight line next to it and compare what you've done to the next thing that you do, like is it twice as long, is it half as long? Um, so it's almost tactile. You start almost feeling your way through your painting so because it's like how far have I gone how um, this is like, so now we're gonna go here and come through here and it's, I'll do the same color for this part of the shadow shape of this helmet oh boy I'll do that coming down and that continues on to the side of his face no break just because it's a, not a helmet anymore doesn't mean it's not a shadow and then we have this coming through here and so now yeah this has gone a little bit smeary but i don't think i i'm not going to keep restating some of the stuff where i know what's happening because i don't want to have to wait a long time for this watercolor to dry so i'm going to keep it a little bit on the dry side so that uh, have to worry about how long it takes for this to dry. If it, if it does um, take a bit, I'm going to get a hair dryer out and we'll take a break and we can ask questions during the break. So uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem, but I hope it is. Okay. So, okay. So I guess um, I'm going to keep doing a little bit more of the background and see if there's any more really dark areas that I need to, because I'm really interested with this underpainting. I'm interested in making sure that I get some of the darks established because I sure don't want um, to have to use a huge amount of pastel when I don't have to. Uh, so underpainting is a nice way to save the amount of pastel that you need and there's two advantages to that. Um, first, you establish your darks, and second, you save money because pastels are expensive, and uh, watercolor is cheaper than than uh, pastels if you just do it as as an underpainting. 
And so let's see, I'm going to do this, this value here, a little bit lighter, and come across. So that's all shadow underneath. And the shadow goes up like this. And that shadow comes straight down and then an angle. And this is all shadowed in here. And then this part of the knee is in shadow. And this comes straight across. So now I'm starting to feel like I know pretty much where things are going to happen. I'm going to make a little bit of a lighter area here and a lighter area here. Maybe I can actually uh, erase a little bit to lighten that up. So I'm going to change brushes and take some of the paint off. So that's another thing about watercolor. You can always erase a little bit. And so this is going to come straight down here, straight down here. And so this is, this is where that uh, the bottom part of the leg is. This is the lighter part of this leg. Now when I do this kind of thing, I'm going to be comparing how how far this this goes. So like um, so this is a a measurement, right? Let's take this 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 little piece of neck goes this far. Let's erase that for a minute. And goes this far and then it goes a little bit further down to this point right there and then that's about the same distance as this goes this way so I can kind of say this piece and this piece about the same and then there's a break and then there's a piece like this that goes about the same so this is kind of funny but it's um I feel like I'm, you know, doing geometry when I do this. It's like it's spatial um, comparing, and so the, the bottom of the knee is going to come and come to about here, that kind of an angle, and so the bottom of this foot has to stop here, and then the, the bottom of this foot has to be about there, which I had put in the first place. So when that happens, I'm I'm very happy if I see that I got it right in the first place. I'm going to, again, I'm going to erase a little bit above this because it kind of smeared down. So I'm going to erase this part so that you can see where this really, this hook really is. And then we have another little piece of green right through here and another hook right in here. So that's um I think I'm gonna start working on, on pastel here pretty soon. I'm gonna uh, take a little tiny break um so it makes sure things can dry just a little bit in just a second and um you can ask any questions um and I can talk about the materials I'm using and stuff like that that most people are always interested in what kind of pastels everybody uses um, and now I have to erase the the new foot position of the arm because this is going to come right here instead of where I had it it has to come there so uh, that's an adjustment and that means that this part here can be filled in Now go ahead and um, a little bit of lighter through here, a little bit of lighter through here. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself to ask. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll put that there. I'll put that piece of bright yellow. Um, I don't really need this because the pastel will certainly do the job, but um, that way at least it's filled in. And uh, let's see, let's put this light yellow here. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and um, do a little bit, a little bit more to the top left, and then I should be about done. Trying to keep it a little bit on the dry side for right now, so that um, I don't get into trouble. Shauna, there was a question. Um, what paper do you normally use with watercolor underpaintings? So I use a lot of times I make panels out of blue on plywood or a uh, gator board, which is another kind of a nice uh, a surface, a support, but anything. And then I'll put clear gesso on it. Uh, I, I've come to really like the surface that clear gesso gives you. Turns out that clear gesso makes a really good pastel surf. And so mm. that's what I usually use. And, um, but for this, uh, I also use sanded papers of different kinds. And um, I can show you something of interest. Um, and I'm gonna go to drawings. And this drawing right here, I did on in charcoal on a piece of, charcoal paper and I didn't like it because it was too um I don't know it just didn't support itself very much I didn't I didn't like the way it looked so I put clear gesso on top of that all over very carefully kind of keeping it a little bit on the dry side and 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 so then I turned it into a pastel this is what it turned out to be in pastel and that was just by putting clear gesso on top of that drawing and I, I, I find that to be kind of cool. Not only did it give me um, a lot more tooth to work on, it got me some, some texture also. So that's something that I've, I've become enamored by uh, clear gesso. I have a question. Um, are there any surfaces that you find uh, when you do the watercolor underpainting that you would not use? I, I don't want to use watercolor paper if I can help it. I do. I started pastel by correcting watercolors, and again, uh, but I don't like the texture that watercolor paper has. And once again, if you if you fill a lot of the uh, bumples and the texture of watercolor paper with some clear gesso, you can get away with murder. So uh, that kind of solves that problem. But that's my and canvas. I wouldn't ever want to work on canvas because I don't like a repeated a repetitive texture. Um, underneath. It's quite a reach from, from where my um, board is to where the palette is, and so it might take a bit of, of time to get from one place to another, but um, I think, now I can pull my, the thing that I've pinned, I can pull that and make it bigger in the corner. I don't know if you can or not, but I've made my um, palette quite a bit bigger. Now I'm just going to um, give give myself a good look over, uh, see what I see, see if there's anything uh, where I want to start first. It, by the nature of um, feeling it, what's cool and what's not, this part is a little bit damp, but this part over here seems like it's pretty good and nice, not, not cool anymore, so mostly dry. You know that if I put pastel on something that's a little bit um, damp, it'll be dark at first and might lighten up a little bit. So we're going to go right through here and pastel like oil is um, of course from dark to light usually it's real easy to lighten things it's not so easy um, to, to put um, dark over light sometimes although it's not impossible but um, what really helps is for me to be um, working thin because if I have, if I don't get too heavy, it seems like it gives me a lot more time to uh, develop something. So now that's that part and I'm gonna see if there's just a little bit through there. And now I'm gonna restate the, uh, the shape of the face because I'm, Let's see, I think I might be able to zoom this a little bit. Um, because 
I also want to well, when I turn it to video, I'm going to have to zoom it again. And maybe just a little bit smaller. That way. Okay. So now I want to, I want to check how, what's the shape of, of this. First of all, the shape of the helmet has to come down. I can see that the shape comes clear here. It's a lot longer and a lot taller, that shape, and it comes across here. And that's going to make the face much smaller, which is a good thing. A little bit of the side of the face. Shauna, there was a question about what kind of pastels you were using. Um, are you using a mix or do you stick to one brand? Oh, I use a mix. And I have to say that I make a lot of my own by smashing up the crumbs of things and, and, and making new ones in kind of a rectangular square shape because I like the, you know, the square shape of like new pastels. So even when it's a bigger piece, I like it to be something that I can kind of paint with. And I don't go back and forth between hard and soft. I don't have any um, order about that. It's like, it seems like whatever the right value and the right color, that's, that's all I'm interested in. And when I'm thinking in terms of value and color, I'm thinking in terms of, um, is it lighter or darker, or is it warmer or cooler? In other words, I'm not going to try to match the exact color. I've come to believe that you can't possibly see all the colors that our eye can see. Our eye can see millions of colors that the, that the camera cannot and the paint cannot reproduce. So. I've decided not to, you know, you can't get there from here, so why fight it? And so I'm going to um, be more interested in adjusting it to, like, that's a little bit too pink, so I'm going to adjust it to being a little bit more gold, and, a, you know, it'll end up being a little bit lighter as well. But um, that's how I think is just, and then that's going to be cut from the other side because it got a little bit fat. So I'm going to cut from the other side in a nice shape of something darker. Let's see. And so we're going to go right down this edge. That's way dark. So I'm going to kind of. OK, so that might be kind of fun to put. Um, Put here. I'm shadowing my own thing. I can. Um, I'm sorry that I, you're going to probably be seeing a shadow for a little while, but okay. So now we have that piece, and then we come down a little bit further, and we do this piece across this way, and, um, and then across this way, and I'll have to adjust all of that a little bit lighter. But right now. Um, yeah, this is going to be really red, so that's not, that's going to be too, too red, so I'm going to change that to be in a little bit like that, that's better, and then, so as I do this, I'm looking, how does this shape come into this shape, it's like, that'll be, um, something that's really important, and then we widen this shape, and come down straight, then come up, and then come down right in here, a little bit more right in there. And so that way, and I guess I, I'm gonna try to work a little bit around the whole thing, and then coming down through here, and now let's see, that's kind of a nice, I can almost say um, that that's going to work for a lot of this uh, dark part. I'm going to see, I have to kind of check this shape, it's getting a little wide, so I, I might have to adjust that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a plumb line from, from his knee, goes right on straight down to the inside of this leg. So that's good. So that's in the right place. I can, I can go with that. 
this one from the from the inside there it comes out a little bit and then comes from the, that knee goes to a little bit to the other side of so I think I have to bring this knee in and and change that from there to there so I just move that in so that means that um, some of that green I'll have to restate and fill in next to it and so that'll be a little smaller shape so that's kind of how I figure I'll, I'll do some straight plumb lines and I'm always making as many comparisons and observations as I possibly can okay so that part will be in there a little bit there this will be that that shape will be nice and then we can kind of fill this in with a little bit of a, a nice solid value right here we could probably give myself a little piece little triangle right there and a little um, then we have just this much and again I'm going to be re restating that because that's too far over. So what I'll do when I have a problem like this where this is like in a different spot than I put it initially I'm going to just take my shapes across this is the lighter yellow shape of the now this this shape and then there's a darker shape that is going to be part of his boot is really quite dark yeah there we go we have a shadow shape here that it is kind of like a little oval thing and we have then after that we have a piece of dark and then we have a piece of dark and then we have a piece of light and then we have the the horse itself and then right at the edge we have this guy's dark piece right there which will be end up being his glove go ahead and how light is light? Um, we can put the darker part here and the darker part here and the part of his knee. Okay, so and so now the side of the horse is face uh, needs to be quite a bit lighter and it's just it's so tempting to do like the eye right now and I really try to resist that temptation and say I need to know where everything is exactly shapes be before I start doing smaller shapes which is really ends up being detail and so if I can wait until everything is locked in exactly the right place then it's easy to keep working smaller and smaller um, shapes until you get everything you need. And this is so much fun. What I'm doing horses, it's like, it's so in a pasture or anywhere that you're, you're seeing, if you can just do the shape under the belly and into the, you know, between the legs, if you can get that shape right, you will, you will get that shape shares the edge. You don't have any trouble at all with um, with making the horse too long because if you go across the back, I can I can absolutely tell you that you will be um, you will be making the horse probably too long. Uh, just like when we do faces, we often make uh, the noses too long because that somehow we have this symbol of making an, an L with a couple of dots on the bottom, and um, it always ends up being a little bit longer than it should be. So um, it's it's really, if just a negative shape sharing the edge of the actual thing makes it so this piece right here then can be the shadow shape there. Comes right on down straight, uh, pretty thin in here. And then it comes in wider. And now I'm looking, where does that line up with this? And so that goes there. And we have that nice little piece of light green that goes across the, the back um, bandage. And then we have another piece of light green that comes here that far. And what's the angle here? And how long is it? And so that's what I'm asking myself as I do this. 
And then, um, then we have, how far does this come down? And then this is, um, comes that way. And this one comes this way. Whoops, I have to bring that up because I moved it. So now, um, when I do this that way, now I have to do uh, the negative shape around that so that I can keep from getting all mixed up. So now let's, um, let's take this and this and now we'll take this piece here. Donna, yeah. I wanted to know if you can back up a little from the drawing. Um, is there a way we can see the reference photo? Okay. Ah, perfect. Okay, so I'm now looking at changing this one. So I'm adding some um, the shape here. It's a little bit on the warm side, but I can I can change that. I just want to look at value a little bit, and also if I put it a little warmer underneath the grass, it helps me to keep the grass from being too acidy. Um, I kind of like to add a little warm to anything green. See what I can find for. This is the part where I'll be starting here and going across here. I'll add some blue, grayish blue, um, to this piece, like right a little higher on the nose. There's a nice piece of dark shape that goes this way. And then I'll start to evaluate how I can make this into the best composition too. It's like, usually, I mean, I just started, you know, doing this as like a, as a thing, like almost like a vignette. But in the end, before I can make this into a painting, I have to make sure that it's a good composition and good design. So what I'll be thinking about I have a whole bunch of horizontals here, and I'll be thinking about how the light's going to come through here and then come through here, and maybe directionally be a little bit lighter through this part of the, um, of, through here, and then kind of come back around here. And I'll be also looking for the dark to be making a, a flow like a river. I'm, I'm looking for how darks and lights can connect instead of being polka dots or splotches on the page i want to see how it flows through the through the piece usually this will would happen before i even start i'll i'll make sure that i i say first of all why do i why do i like this why did i choose this what do i want to say what do what it, in the, in this case it's about color and it's about action and movement, energy, that kind of thing. So this is a communication. I'm trying to um, tell a story and say something. If I, if I start copying a photograph and as a copy and it can be oh so accurate and oh so brilliantly detailed, but in the end, if you say everything, you don't leave anything for the viewer to, to get into. It's a lecture instead of a conversation. And so I really believe that uh, in the end, we all start out copying rather um, tight and we, we copy a lot exact, but as you get more skilled and more experienced, the goal should be to say something. What do you want to express? What's, what's, what are you trying to communicate? You might even say, you might want to give your piece a little bit of a title before you even start and say, what am I thinking about? What's important here? And then, um, then in the end, when, when you um, are thinking like this, the best paintings are not necessarily um, the most photographic. The best paintings are those that it's like poetry. You want to be a little bit uh, essential, a little bit brief, a little bit like the best possible mark to say the most that you can say with the fewest mistakes and the fewest do-overs. And if you can get 60 strokes down to about six really good ones, 
that will actually leave a lot of room for interpretation and also, um, you know, a conversation. Something Somebody can get something out of that. I, I really believe that good composition is your most essential thing. So as I do this, I'm going to probably say, okay, I'm going to be um, thinking in terms of how to, a lot of times you'll see paintings will kind of darken at the, at the corners. They'll they'll go a little bit soft. Instead of having stripes going out like this, you'll see that the corners will be darker and you'll see something kind of coming around a little bit. In a lot of paintings, you'll, you'll notice that the corners are a little bit darker, the sky's a little bit darker. And everything that you do, you kind of let it go a little bit darker out towards the edge. So that keeps us going around. It really helps to think that way. And then, um, then you have to say, okay, in what way it, my light is definitely coming through here, coming through here, coming through here. Probably keep it going. You know, it's like, it's, it's going to be kind of feeling like this is also going to slide through here a little bit. So here we have this part is light. This part is light. We have a, a little tiny bit of a light there now. Um, and then we have a tiny bit of light there. Okay, so here we go. And now I wanna put some more green right here. And this, this piece right here has to be redone. That's light. This is light. Uh, comes like this. This is all solid light. Okay, that's better. And now this is too wide. It should be narrower. And I'll tell you, um, I know from experience, like I can see when somebody else is doing some work, I can see immediately what they're doing wrong. And I know that you guys can see immediately what I'm doing wrong. And that's the nice thing about being able to see shapes. And um, so it's like, I, I'm aware that whenever I'm working that it's like, everybody's saying, well, that's not right. <laughs> and it's kind of, and it's really easy to see everybody else's mistakes and it's harder to see your own. So I'm going to have to adjust this because it's like, um, again, partly because I'm at an angle looking at this, I have to bring that way in. But that's a nice thing about pastel. It's possible to do this. So let's, um, let's bring this shape in at an angle and bring it in like that. And then we can bring that to that shape right there. And, um, That's a little bit better. Now I'm going to look at it from a distance again so that I can see what what needs to be done. Um, there's so many at this point it's like it's really cool. It's all blocked in and, and if I get it blocked in correctly from this point on where, where you see everything I do will will matter so much it's like the last 10 percent of the painting can be just really exciting because it because it starts to you know really matter what 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 you're putting down and it kind of shows and, and pulls things together but that only works if you've got the guts right the bones right it only works if you've done everything that gotten the shapes right in the first place then it starts to be really a fun thing to um to work on it lighter Jonah, color yeah the request if you could you were making a comment about um darkening up the corners um having a painter darker at the edges to help the viewer yeah and can, can you can you say why that is why does that why does that help the viewer i think is the question it, it makes um it makes it kind of go around it's like keeps your eye in a in a nice directional flow 
and artists are always manipulating that quite on purpose. It's like if you start looking at where the darks and the lights go in a painting, you'll you'll find you'll look at the impressionist paintings and you'll you, a lot of times this is funny. You can't see it when you're looking at it regular, but if you turn it upside down, you will definitely see that the that the corners are a whole lot darker than than the um, rest of it and the edges of the painting go a little bit darker and um, so if you don't mind I'll show you a couple examples of that. One of the things that um, I always show people is this piece right here and it's upside down because this is a really complicated painting but can you see the way the light comes through here and it comes through here and see how it comes through their their heads and and then it comes through here and um if i can get rid of some of my screen there and then you can kind of see how the light continues to come through here and there there's an arrow and this arrow is like look here stupid and and it comes to to another arrow that comes here so you're, you're being directed light through light into light. And even here, it's kind of coming through. There's another flow through here, a visual connection right through there. And then I'm going to show you the um, the darks. Can you see how his foot is, is pointing towards the corner? And that's directing our eye. And then the darks also are going through here. And the darks are coming around like this and coming clear through here and connecting also visually through here. He's, flow, he's actually pushing our eye where it needs to go. You should be able to see now that this is darker and this is darker. Can you see that? And also, if I were going to annotate again, um, it's like here's the dark and the dark coming right through here and then it comes like this and it goes like that. And so it's like a big S thing of, of dark and the light does the same thing. So here's the light comes like this and comes through here and then comes through here and uh, comes through here and comes like that. So the lights are, are definitely connected. So that's what we're looking for. Okay. Any other questions while I'm doing this? So everything else I have to do is just cleaning up shapes and it's just um, being a little bit more specific about what, what goes where. I do uh, really take quite a bit of care with changing my edges. I want to have a good variety of different kinds of edges. I think we, we spend too much time making everything sharp and clear and clean. It's one of the things that my students do the most of is making sure everything is crisp and, and sharp. When you are looking at, at the world, when you see something and focus on it, the rest of the world is soft. It, you can't focus on everything at once. And, and yet the photo does that. The photograph always nails everything a sharp edge and a crisp edge. And I think we see a lot of the world through photographs. And so it kind of fools us to think that everything should be uh, crisp and sharp. But a good artist and an experienced artist is always going to have a variety of edges, soft and hard, lost and found. Um, you know, just now you see it, now you don't. Um, and especially dark edges going into dark. So if I have... Um, a chance I'm going to be I'm going to be really soft about it. It's like that does not need to be a hard edge. It's almost like it'll help me have movement if some of these edges are are not all hard. So let me share the screen again. Shauna, do you normally um, paint to the edge of your paper, or do you leave it unfinished? Usually, I don't paint to the edge of, I'll usually use a bigger paper and sometimes I'll, I'll have to say that I'll, I'll work on a, a 16 by 20, then I'm gonna paint to the edge. But if I'm working on a big old piece of uh, UART or something like that, um, or a panel, 
of something that's more paper. I'm going to work on a really big piece and let it be cropped to where I want it to be cropped. Uh, it'll end up being a pretty much a standard size. I, I don't want to have custom frames all the time, but I do want to have um, a, you know the chance to to put this where I want it. So I'll probably end up putting it a little bit more out to you know a little bit further out this direction, and um, and also. Who knows? Uh, it might end up in a, being a square canvas, you know. It just whatever looks good. If I if I have it on open, it's it gives me more chance. And also with watercolor, I've found that if you don't go clear to the edge, it doesn't buckle as much. If anybody um, has any more questions, feel feel free. I'm just going to do smaller and smaller shapes until it starts to come together. Now that um, that cloth is way too deep, and so I have to change that. So first of all, I'm going to look at the nice piece of bright orangey red that I'm seeing here, and down here about here. That's the shadow part of it, and then the other part would be much more orange. I'm going to add a little bit of cool to this because it's um, like a shadow shape, so I'm adding a little cool to that and a little bit of cool to this. And some cool here. The nice thing about pastel, it's just so wonderful to add these beautiful um, cobalt cools. I, I noticed that. There's no other medium that I see these wonderful cobalt shadows. That's like a, there's a small triangle at the front of his muzzle. I think it's um it's always interested me that if I get if I get the shape right it'll be right and so I don't even need to know what it is it's just I just um I just try really hard to catch the shape exactly as it is and um and then whatever is going on it it reads just just fine so this is going to come here and then this is going to be a little bit more. I will be really happy when we can get so that we can do um, more live demonstrations instead of Zoom. A little bit of cool dark. Really. 
now I have to bring that lighter color up close to the uh, this leg because it's got to be a lot more narrow. So I've never ever been able to, you know, get everything exactly right. I'm always my goal would be to like what I was talking about, make fewer mistakes, get everything exactly right in the first place. But I always have to make corrections and I certainly don't mind uh, doing it. It's like, it's, uh, I just love painting. I just love doing this. And so it's, um, it's not a chore, but it is true that a lot of times it's like, I make fewer mistakes than I used to. That's for sure. Um, and it's, it's just a, a joy when, when you, Put all your pieces together, and it's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle. It it, it um, tends to come together, and and then all of a sudden it just reads really nice. And it's really, there's there's nothing better than being able to express yourself in in this um in, in this way, and and maybe put a little bit of beauty in the world, you know, just give a little bit of something for somebody to enjoy. And um, that reminds me of something that I found out when I was starting my art career, I guess I assumed and a lot of people do that it's about, it's about how many people have some bucks and that's what sells your paintings. And it turns out that that wasn't the case. Um, it, it turns out that people that buy paintings, it's because they had paintings in their homes as kids that have always been a, a priority in their lives. It, it's been something that they thought about and cared about, not just trotting down to the museum on a field trip, but actually somehow it became more important. And if you think about it, most of our paintings go for a lot less than a couch and they last a lot longer. So it's not, it's not how much money it's, it's like whether you care about it or not, whether, whether it's important to you. That was a nice thing to find out. It wasn't about how much money somebody had. See if I can I'm gonna zoom in on this again and and show you um, that it's just it's still very soft and um, it's not very detailed, but I think it's it's reading pretty good. Every time I clean something up, it's it's going to be just a little bit. You know, this this will be cleaned up here, and then I'll have this piece cleaned up here, and there'll be a little bit more of a corner there. But I don't have one hard edge. I don't think in here. They're they're all soft edges, and and yet it's you know it's still working okay. So that's what I'm talking about. It's like if you get the shapes right, it starts to be okay. One right here is definitely missing. And have this one here, which will have some, this side will be lighter. And a little bit of a light piece there. And a 
piece of headband is a smaller shape and you know, I'm, I'm making sure to just do the lighter part of it because um, it, there's never there's whatever area you have it's like there should be a, 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 a light side a surface side and a shadow side and it shouldn't be just light across the whole thing it's going to cool over here and so you have to change from the light side to the shadow side. And so sometimes when we do things like the rim of a bottle, it, you always have to say if it's in the light area, it has to be lighter. And if it's in the dark area, it has to be darker, period. I think I can probably call it a day. And I just think this is amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful demonstration, a technique which I obviously do not do. So this is just um, wondrous. <laughs> That's kind of the end of the, the demonstration, I think. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And um, Shauna, you got lots of praise and thank yous that uh, are on the chat. So when you get a chance to review, you will uh, look and see how people really enjoyed this. So oh, thank, thank you so you. much for being here. Most of it across. Thank you so much. It was it was wonderful. I like being so close up to to where you're working. And I'll see you later. And maybe I'll be able to pull something together for the Renaissance tonight. Yay! <laughs> you have till midnight. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right. <laughs>